theology. We are gathered here today in the memory of our mother, daughter, sister, and grandmother, Nancy Guru. We are together so that we may acknowledge and share both our joy in the gift that her life was to us and the thing that her passion brings in sharing the joy and the pain today. May we let reason the pain and remember more clearly the joy. Nancy Wanshu Boyer was born on February 15, 1970 at Saba Saba, Columbia County, in Canada. She was the second child of Chris Ayla Wamui and the late Julius Boyer. Nancy is survived by her mom, brothers and sisters, husband Godfrey and Gigi, children Kate and George, and grandchildren Ian and Ashley. Nancy attended school at Kahamu before proceeding to Kitani Secondary School. After graduation, Nancy worked with Kenyan Railways before starting family. Nancy relocated to Minnesota to join her children about two years ago in her lifetime. She truly enjoyed spending time with her children, grandchildren, and extended family. She also liked to she also liked to listen to Kikuyu gospel music. She was clean and cook and take care of Asian and national. And she loved the Lord as well and would go to Okendo SDA Church that she referred to as her home church. Whenever she had the chance, she also attended Birth Gay Church. Nancy was only 47 years old when she passed away unexpectedly on a Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019, and Nancy and from a blood clot in one pulmonary in Boston, in Boston. It's hard to say goodbye. We wish that we had more time and perhaps that during the time we have spent more of it together. But we know that she is at peace. There is pain and sadness, but even though she is gone, she has left the legacy of her love and her perseverance. The ways she touched our lives will fade, and I ask you to keep those memories alive by sharing them with me and with one another. Thank you. But I cannot leave without sharing at least two memories I remember with her. The first one is when my mom, she cooked so good food, she cooked even better than my mom. So I have one question to ask her. Mom, will you ever learn how to cook like her? Second, um, she showed me how special my dad was because every day she would think my dad is smoothie and not her own daughter. So it showed me how much dads are nice and good and special, how my dad was special. So now I know that from now on I'm going to be using my dad as a special person because he reminds me of grandma because of how special she was to him and how special he is. Thank you for coming and for coming for everything and giving the comfort and for listening to the best mom, the best grandma in the world that I know. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I never, two months after I had my baby, we started working together and not even one day she ever complained about anything. She always greeted me with a smile, she was very respectful and we were very close. Even when I had my child, I was going through some, some issues with a new baby, being a new mother. She always was there for me, even coming to my house just to keep me company or to help me with my baby so I can have a nap. That's how close I was with my baby. I would say, hey, Paul and Sana, we are this together, and we are all going to miss her so much. I love her so much. Thank you. Many words because, God, how, how do you even explain? Even to make it worse, she wasn't even sick. We didn't even go to the hospital to see her and comfort her at my bedside and uh, accept that she's suffering. 
she's going through some, you know, sickness and say, oh God, just let her rest so that she can go away from the pain. She just left us. So when you see my sister, who was a friend, a mother, a confident, and somebody that she, she trusted that much, left without even, the only goodbye she said is like, you see, I can't breathe. That is the goodbye she said. What about Kate, who was at home? How can you even handle? How can you handle that kind of situation? It, it is so sad. It is so sad. We wish she could have lived longer. We wish sometimes, even though we don't pray for it, we wish that she could have been sick so that we can have a closure. As, you know, I'm not certain that she's living, but living just like that, we, we, don't, we don't know. We don't, it's, 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 it's unacceptable. But we know that she loved God and we thank God that one day we all should see her again. Thank you. As hard as it is, but we want to thank you, uh, Susan, and the words. This family was very close to Nancy, and they are very close to David and Kate. That's why we gave them uh, time to, to mourn for their friend. Now, I, I want to remind everybody here that uh, um, where we are here, I know most of you have already contributed financially. You have uh, done what you possibly would do. But uh, as of yet, last night we announced that the house will have enough funds for the boy. Um, but we need the family, we need the immediate family also to accompany the body home. So we haven't hit our target yet. And we, we beseech you, as we have always done, kindly, if you have anything to spare, check with our um, treasury desk out there, the leaders are there, you can check with them. We need um, to hit our target by tonight, so that Kate uh, will start preparing the journey back home. I greet you in the name of Jesus. How are you? Praise the Lord. Buona sera. We are gathered here to celebrate a life well lived, in as much as she left us in a shock. It was not a shock to God. Nothing come by surprise to God. And that's why he alone is God. We may have many questions, but those will be answered in heaven. As I'll be reading this scripture, there are people I had mentioned, if you know I had texted you, you can join me here as I'll be reading this first. In Revelation 14, verse 3, the Bible says that blessed are they that die in the Lord, so they can rest from their good works. You have the blood son talking of the good memories of the grandmother, and that reminds us that that was good work that she did. On Thursday night, we had Kate and George sharing with us the good moments they had spent with the mother. And for sure God had prepared her because even the things they, they shared, they were amazing. And this is to say that God never hides the secret of those who love him. My prayer is that we will all desire to have a good relationship with the Lord so that nothing will come by surprise. 
It's amazing that even the pictures we see here, the daughter came saying, let me take you a picture for the funeral and say, why do you talk like a foolish person? And it's good we be talking things so that we see how God talks and ministers to us. And she said, another good one for, for somebody who was out of stage and said, Mama Ruth always tells us to be prepared and even to have pictures that we don't have to look God looking. And then nice to say, now the one we are remembering. Then let me smile well so that it can be put on my casket. My brother and my sister as we are gathered here. Nancy is not with us physically. She's not going to come back to us, but we know where she is. It's our time to prepare ourselves. I also want to say that it takes the community to hold our shoulders and our hands. Because when this happened, David called me, and it's always good you always respond. I was sleeping because I had one that was tired, and when I woke up, I saw I had a list call from David. And when I called him, he started crying, my mother is no more. And I pulled, literally pulled my husband out of bed. I couldn't believe it and I knew my phone. We went there, we lived 20 minutes away. We went with my husband and my son. And when we reached there, when I called him to open for us, he said, they are taking the body outside, you cannot enter. So when they are putting the body into that car, I was there. I was able to talk with the chaplain who was also the, the government representative. And I got so much information. And I tell you, as a community, there are things that we do not know. It's my prayer that when we meet, I like to share the word of God. And we need to go beyond that. To be sharing the knowledge that you may not know. And I also want to thank in absentia Pastor Yunus Sharon who is in Kenya. Because we did not know how to dispose this to Kate and our prayer and I went to pray, God, let's not get hear this news from the media. God answers prayers we did. We engaged her, I called Pastor Yunus, we engaged her, we engaged her, and we were there until 5 a.m. And God heard our prayer. She did not hear it from the media. She was on her way to serve. I also want to say that a single son is saying, when he calls me, I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. Nancy was called when she was working for the Lord. Because part of her was in Kenya serving the disadvantaged. That was Kate in the Kate Home Foundation. George was in Germany in the army serving. What are you doing? We were also told on Thursday that she was taken by the banner to shop for shopping and she said I'm gonna cook for three days for Davy so that she feels like Kate is here. So she was fully supporting Kate Hope Foundation while Kate was away. My question for you is, when your time comes, because the Bible says that it's appointed for man once to die, and after that judgment, where will you be? Will we be serving? And the Lord will bless you. I have a dedication of a song I love. Now my friends will not come. When death comes to our loved ones, we have many questions. And it's only God alone who know about it. And Him alone will be able to comfort us. And I'm going, we are going to sing it in Kikuyo, in our mother tongue. Kikuyo Kakuya Kwedeko. The group you see here is representing part of the celebrity moment with joy, praise, and worship, of which Kate also and Eden are part of. And that's why we are going to sing that song.
not you, then we are Lord, we like no words, but you know, we are poor son. This is the time that words can never express. But all we can do and say is for any son. By the way, uh, my name is Shem, my wife Nancy, we came from Texas. Just to, just to put, put the books, maybe why they call me. Um, but Dave is my brother-in-law. And uh, people call her right now, they say Mama, and Nancy, Nancy, but uh, I call her Mama. Mama and my late mama, they were the cornerstone behind that baby and the young boys uh, working and everything. They fought, they see that big, they shake hands, they bless them, they got a long journey. And these two women, they died the same day that one minute they were strong going on with their daily duties, the next minute they were called and they are dead. But my sister, you like questions? But just remember that God gave me time that you stayed with your mom. You shared with mom. She is a mother to you. Brother George, as you go, I know you're inductive. God will protect you and bless you. And as I tell you, Sana, this is a tough time. Let's keep them in prayers and uh, God bless everyone. Uh. Uh, since he rallied with the community, he sent out messages, he gave quite a lot. I told the parents yesterday. Mm -hmm.
now in my presence. May you be here, Lord. May you lead us, and whatever that shall take place at this moment, glory and praise and, and honor shall be yours forever. We may as a gate of God that the time is coming when death shall die. When we shall stand and boldly ask death, where is your state? That morning, Lord, we shall be with our dear sister who has gone ahead of us. That day shall be a day of singing, the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Therefore, Lord, we invite your presence. Come, be with us. Give us courage and strength now and forever because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we move forward, um, I want to, in a moment, there is a song that is so strong and encouraging that I would wish to sing as we move forward. So, that thing that is going to sing with it is I will speak, I will remember it when I go home, while you are here today. But I don't know that more right now. The word brave and bold may be sink in your mind tonight. As I speak about Nancy, I call her right now Nancy. Because She's not just Nancy. She's not just mom. She's not just a mother, a grandma, mother-in-law, a sister. She's my best friend. She, it's more than two weeks she has passed away. I have cried enough. As I share anything about my best friend, I may forget to say this one. I'm not here to give both of them, but I want you to take this. As you go home. Many times we may want to help people because they have showed up in our times of our need. We go back to our record who came for me and who did not came for me. I know those that have stood with me, it's not because that I stood with them. Maybe perhaps you had something and I never came to your house. I want to tell you, life is very dynamic. When you are expecting a friend, somebody who you went and wrote your name to show up, they will not show up with your expectation. I say this because I cannot promise today because you came for me, I will come for you. But there is one thing I'll ask God tonight. That the way you showed up for me, if you never see me in your place at the time, you'll be tearing or anything expected because you gave the most or you gave it to me. May God send somebody who will represent me on my behalf that you may give more than you gave me. That you may see Kate in times you will be tearing so much. You may not see me, but I'll ask God again to send someone who will represent me when you see me. When you look on your record, you don't see Kate on world. May angel show up on my behalf because I cannot promise everyone that I will show up. Since my mom passed away, 
away. My best friend. I cried so much. Please, I ask for a little bit of patience. If you have to leave, it's okay. If we don't get the preaching tonight, I need to meet me to speak about my mom. Please respect that because I will never repeat about my friend. This is my last day and the last thing that I can ever give it to my mom and to speak proudly. Who is mom? Who I need to share the word like every day. But allow me to speak the much I can. If I get promotion, don't tell me to sit down because she was my best friend. I will never stood for her again. You may wonder why I don't cry right now. Why I'm not tearing. People have come to my house. Think I could just see them enter on the door and I just start crying and I don't want to see them again. Because I ask myself, even if they come, they spend the whole time, mom, her friend is not coming back. But she's gone. 
who does that remind me? That is what we expect is not what happened. I could not imagine my mom can go that soon. No way. I told them until I come and I call mom, that's when I will believe my mom is gone. When I look, my other brother. able to do and feel proud that even if I don't have money, I can never get anything to give my mom as the last thing. He has made me do whatever it took to give mom. I remember during their sister in Rome, he stood brave in front there and he said, I spent a lot of money to maintain my sister. I sent money every week to put bread for my sister. But there is nothing more we could have done. He said that day, until that day, those ones are still in my mind. And that's why I will say tonight, never ignore even the most boring speaker enter anywhere like you know nothing and listen carefully you may not get what they say but you learn one word he said that those who are here the only thing you can do to someone when they are alive is when you give them when they are alive and you feel that you did what you could have done when my mom came here, I asked myself, what can I do to ever feel if she ever go before me that I did what I could have done? I'm telling you, my mom was my friend. And most of it that I will remember my mom is that even though she did not look my clothes like in her daughter's school, she used to tell me, if she like one of my girls, she would tell me, here we may pay her. I used to give her anything she asked, I never said no. Anything she asked, I never said no. To a point, my husband, who is a very hardworking man, that sometimes he would ask me, Sometimes you ask someone, I talk about who? Senior. Because we don't have money, but I want to show mom that we got it. My brother has taught me, walk like you own it. Raise your standard because nobody will ever raise your standard. Do you want to just always tell me that raise your standard? for yourself because no one will ever raise your standard. Yeah, and walk like you want it. Yes. Fake it until you make it. Yeah. I tell my husband that you know that the energy is oppressor, but you have no idea why we pretend to be Uhuru's family. Oh, yes. Because my brother you know, said they married someone from Uhuru family. <laughs> When I see you, I see Margaret Kenya. I say yes. And then I used to tell him, I used to, when he tell me that, I say, I wish you knew how I grow up. Me? But I, t I showed up like we had the most money. We came from a very rich family because I raised my standard. They will never put me down. Yes. Because mom made me to be who I am tonight. You know, when I look from Sami, it was hard for me even to put a picture, even on Facebook, to say that mom 
uh, rests in peace, mom. It was hard even to tell a friend my mom went to be with the Lord. It was hard. But I remember a text Sammy wrote to me, Kate, you have been always close family. And I'm sure my mom and my mom normally will fill the gap. But I know my mom will allow you to call her mom. I'm thankful for Sammy to allow me me that I can call her mom, mom. When I look on my right, I can see my sister Doris. When I see her, I remember my mom asked me, after one week she was here, at Ujenda for Doris, you have always told me the goodness of Doris. When I gave birth to my twins, more than a month, or I don't know how many days, I was in a coma. But my sister-in-law took those kids like her own children. When I saw them, when I woke up from where I was, she came and asked me, they were not sleeping, they were in the hospital after I was discharged. Not so much ago, my sister-in-law, there's something we were talking, I'm not going to say it, but she asked me, Nyambura, okay, are you a lawyer? I have always been loyal to you. Can you be loyal to me? I said, yes. No matter what come, I'll always stand for you. Since my mom passed away, Doris told me, give either phone call, text message, reminding me, let me know whatever I can do for you. Remember, I'll always be there. It was very even coincidence that George, the first person, he wrote a message and said, Would you pick me and Doris from the airport? Doris, they are very private that I cannot speak them, but you know them. I promise you tonight. I remember you. When I was going to Kenya, I told you, Mama, I took a good job. And he said, Give Mom the phone as you go to Kenya. Whatever she needs, she call me. I promise to you that I'll be loyal to you. If I cannot, may you have someone who will represent you to be loyal to you. Mamuri's family, when I look at you, Nancy, and everyone, you nine, Kylie, and everyone, when I see you, it reminds me, if it was not your mom, I would be standing here to be called David wife. My mom stood at strong and brave and said, Mutoto wangu haezi olewa kisi, And she completely refused. Joshua's mom said, What are you telling me? I was Simba. I can be a camera at a poor. Yamura. I said, You have no idea who is my mother. Please don't go. She was not, there were so many women and my mom stood brave and saying, my daughter, hata kuja kuwanelewa tena, wakisi wanaowa bibi ya pili. Lazima wata kuja kuwa bibi ya pili. Na lazima atawa mkisi mwezake. Kwa hivyo, my daughter, she's not going to kiss me. I'm not ashamed to say this because this is the mother, my friend. I'm speaking what she said. And they went that evening knowing 
no hope. But when Ruri's mom went to my mom, she said she wanna go alone and face that line and say she's not gonna be married in Kisi. She went very she came very early in the morning. She talked to mom. She's very, she has a very soft voice, just like you mean. And she said, Come and Kusoma, we know she's under 18, but I think the man of a song or two. Your family, you know, the man of a song or two. You know, remember, I had not even gotten my result from high school. I met Debbie on my way from high school closing day and he gave me a ride because I didn't have a bus fare. <laughs> she spoke very well to a point where she was able to convince my mom, yes, I can let Yamura get married to your family and she completely forgot that they are kissing. If he ever divorced me or he ever married a kissy, remember you have a cast from mom. Right. <laughs> I want to apply it so you know. Yeah. When I look at Florence, my mom, she reminded me that no matter there's some people who like to talk and talk and talk. We have done a lot. To a point on April, as mom was going to Kenya, she called me and my mom and I left everything and I went. The day my mom passed, she was the first person who called me and prayed and prayed and prayed over the phone. And I don't know why I did not ignore the call. To a point, I got myself prepared and I was going on the mission. And I got in the car, she still praying. And I muted her and I said, Hey, you be now in the car. She liked to pray so much. You know, she needed just to know that she needed to pray short and God will hear anything. And I said, You guys, we were seven in the car. And I said, You guys don't talk. There's somebody online praying for us. She prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. It's those prayers. God me where I was needed so that the message can be passed to me. In a look on my left and see Virginia, my right, Koi, and some other few people, the last day that I went to view mom, that, night, that day from 8 to 11, I had those young ladies in my house, and they are all motherless daughter. It gave me a signal to know that when you are left, you're not left alone. There's some people who have been left without a parent and God will always send such kind of people to stand with you and get to understand why and how you can be strong. They do not know but I accept it and I got the meaning at the moment. They, were, they never told me sorry. They never told me, we know how you feel it. 
they, they were doing stuff. They did everything. But in my mind, I looked at all of them. They never got to understand, even as if there were six of them in the house. And nobody has their mothers tonight. And I considered myself that they were there to make me understand my mom. She's gone and she's not coming again because I was telling everybody, no, she's not gone. My mom, my friend, have made me to know, to understand, to be a strong woman. The first time I spoke with the devil, because he never told me, you know, I called mom constantly, one hour, without answering the phone. As soon as I hung my call, I called David and said, when is the last time you spoke to mom? David would tell me, what time are you going for the foundation? Because I'll call you in a week. He didn't want to speak because he knew my mom is not there. that I knew her password and even the pattern of her phone. That's how friend we were. Tonight, even her bank account, I could tell her PIN number. I called the phone and I saw the minutes from the time she passed away that the first person she called was David. And it was a missed call. David did not get to answer. The second call she made she called Ronald. The that call she made was every the phone call she made was Susie. Ronald and Susie answered. Ronald did not understand the mom. But if I see Ronald tonight, he will always remind me to be obedient even if it's not my own parent. I will be obedient to any parent I come across. Because Ronald was not a child of mom, but when mom called Ronan, that Sunday, they went with Ronan to do shopping, and that evening, she called me and she said, we made a warm match, we can do a chakula, we can a we can chakula a chakula. As you had my kid, I didn't know. But I didn't know how to make good food, like my mom. It's true that I almost, and I did ask David, how comes other people answered mom's phone, but you didn't answer? Maybe if you answered, you could have saved her. I almost hearted his feeling and he responded, you want to be a made mom to die? I walked out of him because I asked myself, how comes he didn't answer mom but he answered other people to get 
gave the message the mom is so brief, able to breathe. But then I composed myself and I thought it so deeply. And I would say, I'm speaking from my heart. I take my words back. You did not miss it intentionally. You missed it because either you could have done something dangerous, drive so bad, or over speed, and you leave your own children, or an accident maybe, or something happened. Because my kid have witnessed, my Aiden have witnessed that I didn't know how that is special because you did not make even smoothie to your own daughter, but you made only one cup for David. Mom made the first call to say and to prove that she loved you. That's why she did not call anybody else first. And that's why you missed her call. Mom, you have been so close. She never got to hide anything to me. Tonight, if I, if I look at these two pictures, I will tell you that Mama Ruth was her true friend for sure. This one used to be her best dress. It was bought by Mama Ruth before even she came to this country. And she sent it with me when I was going to Kenya. When she arrived in America, Mama Ruth took mom to shopping. And the last picture I took of mom before I sent her back to Kenya, this dress was bought by Mama Ruth. This picture you see and the dress. Mom used, used to go to church two days in a week, Saturday and Sunday. She respected Adventists because I got married to an Adventist. We had to go to Adventist. So we said, go up there both sides. We go on Saturday and we go on Sunday. On Sunday, as we were coming out of the church, there was a sign outside. And she said, take me a good picture of me. And I said, Mom, ujo umezeka, ima neno ya kwa update status, leave it for me. I mean, I update status, you update status. I'm almost dropping status for George. So drop it for me. So that next year or two years, I'll leave it for George. For the fact I have stopped posting pictures on Facebook because I have left George to be doing that. I'm old for that. You're old, mom. In my name, your picture, how and mom, they love pictures. And they can take one hour tell you, and you get tired. And after I took a couple pictures, I told mom, mom, let me take a picture for your burial. And she said, in Kikuyu, that's me, sometimes you talk like foolish. I said, Mama Ruth said, that take a good picture that if you die you don't stress people looking for your good picture that will be framed for your casket and for sure i did it she smiled and said okay take a good one then she smiled and i took a good picture of her If I look back there, I can see Shiko. When I see Shiko, remind me part of 
mom making to be this country was she co-contributed a lot to bring mom here. She called me one day and said, what do you want, Kate? There's something I want you to help me so I can be able to bring mom. And she said, tell me what it is. And I said, you can't talk over the phone. Come home or you tell me to come at your place. We talk. She said, Kate, let me tell you again. In life, I may not take a phone to keep you on the phone so that you can know I'm a true friend. Just text me that it's urgent to call you back or text me straight without telling me this and this and this. I said, this is what I want. And she said, all that? Okay, by tomorrow I'll send it to you, but I'm not coming to your place. Let's tell me, a true friend, you don't have to be a phone conversation 24 hours so that you can prove I'm your friend. I call you every day so that you can prove that. No. It's a friend in need when you need someone. I cried her emotion. 
that she asked me on Monday that is gone and kept her moisturized. I thought peace and I called George and I told George I want you home. And I said, you have to get this for me. Now, to be strong, you have to sit and stand like a man. When I assess what you have done to mom, you did your best. Because, George, when mom was going on April, George had been serving in the military, and George is the most Toughest and selfish when it comes to money, he's a real money kikuyu man that you cannot get a shilling from George unless it's for a need, unless it's a serious problem. You know, I left mom yesterday and I said, Mom. I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna make your arrangement and I'm gonna plan for your burying and stand and say I'm proud of you. And I say even the people who broke the news were leaders, the people who delivered the message to me were reverend and they told me, Kate, you are just a baby to us. But even when you go to America, we do listen to you. I'm a reverend, I'm a bishop, but I, I volunteer in your foundation because I believe in you. You are strong and brave woman that you have proved to us. Even kids can rule, can make good leaders. This one came back very quickly. And I said, Mom, it's my time to stand strong and brave and take the leadership in this family. When I asked David, he said, I don't know. George, I don't want to talk. I told him, sit down here. Now we have to get this going. And George, we have to plan. How long have you been given the permission from the military so I can start planning the day? Kate, I don't know. I said, you have to speak to me. And I remember the first time George read, accepted my call to speak because as soon as they told me, they called me and they told me my first person came in mind was my brother. How are we left with the madness? Not even my dad who was in Kenya who was close to me. I didn't call none of those. I called George because I felt the love of a mother. And I said, how could we be left mothers? With the church, how could the man die? How could God let the people who have nothing, who who are taking their time to serve the humanity, you let their best friend die when they are away? I say, Mom, I spend a lot of my people, money, my serving, helping children, helping disabled, helping orphan. And what did that happen to me? Is that the love that you love people? But then it reminded me that, Mom, you have always said, Pengine kitu wa huwa unasabai juu ya maomi ya wale wazazi. Because sometimes my mom would ask me, Well, na kikuyu, when you hoya lalo shine? I say, Mom, how do you know I didn't pray today? She said, you know, for two years, my mom has been my Arab. I never said Arab. I said, mom, I'm going to work or I'm going somewhere. I need to wake up at this time. She has been my Arab. She said Arab on my behalf. And then she come to the living room, sit there and make sure I wake up. She will call my phone and call and call because once I sleep, I sleep. She said, my, with my husband, they were laughing and saying, I sleep like somebody who doesn't have a key. Even if the kid was to get sick at night, I will not hear. 
because my heart felt to hear kid coffee, wake up, go give medication, and I don't hear nothing. And my mom said that wewe, you forget everything. So she became my Arnold. When she came, I had more than 20 Arnold set on my phone to wake me. Now my Arnold is gone. I have to reset back on my phone. It's okay, mom. So as we sat down yesterday, I told Joy, when I look at you, you, have, you don't have to feel bad that you are in Europe, I was in Kenya, when mom passed away. I said, you know why she died when we were, we were away? Because we could have not handled. We could have been traumatized with the love forever and ever. God let our love to be away and not to see mom struggle to, to breathe, mom not to struggle, when they try to do everything, it could have traumatized. I know I could have responded before, but I could have left with traumas of how we tried to bring her back. And I said, that's why we have to stand. I said something about John that he's a selfish person. For the first time he went to the military, I came back, I had gone to serve in my foundation, and I came back. I didn't have money. I said, you know, George, it's not all the time you're gonna go to David. So if you have something when you say you send it to me. He responded very quickly and said, What is the problem? How come you don't have money? And I said, I don't want much, send me just a hundred dollars. And he wondered why I said just a hundred dollars and he said, is that all? Let me know if there is any other problem at home. Are you okay? Have David done something for you? I said, no. Tonight, remind me those words that we need to be there for each other, George. It remind me that when mom was going home, George, the selfish man, who have been serving in the military, who have took all his years to save his money from military. He took every coin from his account and said, Mom, go buy what you want in Kenya. And when mom came back and said, George, you finished all the money, but I want you to give cake. I will put in some money for you because see now I don't know where you give me all the money I make, I'll be giving you 500 every two weeks. And George said, Mom, you don't have to do that. I gave you because you're my mom. So George, Mom left knowing that you, you loved her, you did everything. Can you imagine, since you served the military, you took all the saving and gave it to mom. And that's why you had to go back to the military to be away, and that proved to you that mom had loved what you are doing. On April, mom went. In the entire time I have been having this foundation, organization, my mom has never attended or got so much interest on my foundation. But that time, she also took the money she was given and went to spend all the money buying food and serving. She went and visited a lot of family, but the one she she stepped in the home 124 and she came back and she told me, kids never get tired to do what you do. I have never known what to do. I have understood those children continue helping them. They really need so much. They're so needy. There's so much need to be done. Please, I never take any donation, any clothes, that is donated, give to your children.
because that's money can each your children can back come back to you
to serve people who will never come back and give it back to you, disabled children. I took my resources, my money, to go serve someone who will never come out of the wheelchair to come give it to me. I had not gone to give to someone because they will come assist me in terms of me. I'm trying to say, don't go to Matanga because you have seen those people come to your Matanga or those people normally go to people's Matanga. Show up because at the moment you are capable to go, you are healthy and you can do it. If you can't, it's okay. Don't feel guilt about it. My mom, for sure, the Lord had shown her that she was about to die, but she didn't know it. She spoke about her dead dream in a hidden way. God was sure that we never understood that mom was speaking about her death. Because all that had been happening, from the time she came here, her mom asked her, how long are you going to be in America? Remember, you are like the father of this family. Don't stay too long in America. And mom replied to her mom, mom, how long do you want me to be in America? In Kikuyu, my grandma said, On a Miyakai Kobina we carry, even 10 years you can stay. Say, Akini, I'm not scared. Just stay only two years. Because when your father died, he left you as the father of this family because you're the first one who is left to take the heart of this home. And for sure, after exactly two years, my mom went on April to see her mom and say, mom, I have returned after two years. They had the best time because mom, my shoshu never got to come to stay in the city. No matter you say what, if she's sick, she'll come, go to the hospital and go back. she say, her cows, are hung they are hungry, so she needs to go back and take care of them. But when my mom went back, she was okay to stay with the mom for two weeks in Nairobi. And this time, as my mom was coming back again, she went back to the village and said, Mom, now this time, how long do you want me to stay in America? And my grandma said, Hey! Even the other time I said two years, it was a mistake. Please, this time, hey, even one month you come back every month. My mom had died in a month after she came back to America. I'm going to take her back home. When my mom came back here, she had left me and I said, Mom, I will not work until you come back because, you know, for two years, you have spoiled me, you made me to forget that I have children. Now, I can't take it, children and work. Until you come back, that's when I'll go back to work. Because, for two years, I cannot tell you how the laundry of children are done. How the room of my twins look like for two years. How the food in that house is being bought. 
how it's been cooked for two years. When I waited for her and she came back, I said, I still don't feel like going back to work. She said, remember, you're going to stay here, you need money. I said, mom, money is not important. I just feel, let me spend, it was two weeks so I can go home. I just feel I want to spend this time with you before you go back to work and before I go to Kenya. And the last Sunday, I called my brother and I said, George, I need you home. And he said, kids are working, I can't come. I said, money is never enough and money is not too important. And he said, I'll get back to you. And George, after that minute, he came back to me and said, I'm coming. And George came. That Sunday, I was supposed to leave on Tuesday. He was supposed to leave on Thursday. We had the last meal with the mom. And she said that, George said, Mom, you have never cooked food like this one. It's the best food you have cooked today. And mom said, make sure you take some and bring some for Kate. And how we ate that food, she was sit, she was standing on the aisle as she watched us eat the food. She made chapati and beef until we finished. It flashed back, but at that time I did not see it. When we were done and said, she said, you have, you are full now, but you don't think about action and aiding. What do you think they will like? My mom took her time and gave to George, and George went and said, go buy what they want. And then, put your car gas. I said, Ma, George should be giving you money, not you giving George. And Mom said, Sina watoto na tafutia wengine, nigini tu. And I said, Mom said, George, is the son and get to be left to me. You know, you are gone, and George is my son. I said, George is my son. So, and I said, You want to prove? I took out the message from my phone and I showed my mom that message George had written saying, Kate, you're not my sister. You are my mother and the best mother who have raised me who never took time to take care of her children like me. But then, Mom said, that's why I say a child will never grow up to be called a man. If it's your child, he will make to be a child. Never call him a grown-up man. He tell me tonight, and George, I'll be there to be your mother. I was told to write a tribute, and I said, I can't write a tribute. There's a lot I can share about mom. There's a lot to say about mom. But then, mom, I'll keep those good things. I'll stay to be a good wife. Because you have shown me how to be respectful, how to cook for a man, how to take care of the children. Now that you have left, 
Ale on je dobrý. On je systém dobrý. I'll take care of you. For my children, I will start looking the best one drama made it for you. Then, tell me this will be there. And I don't want to say that we don't have an argument because my love to you. I will remember you're the most patient person to mom that although she loved me and Joe, she would say, when will be David be off because So I'll try to be patient with and I feel relieved and to tell people don't plan 